Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus asleep in the bottom of a boat. Jonah asleep in the bottom of a boat. The sea and the waves around these two prophets raging. Jonah was sent by God to preach to the pagan people of Nineveh. Your pastor has just been called to serve the saints of the English district. I did hear rumors of Pastor Hardy looking to charter a boat away from Detroit this Thursday after the vote. It is a tremendous burden that has been placed upon his shoulders. But I need to tell you, it is a worthy calling. I mean it. As someone who did not grow up in a Lutheran church, I must insist that our tradition has a great deal to, uh, to offer our age. We must not shrink from this task. Pastor Hardy will do a fine job leading our district. You all as a congregation are being drawn closer and closer into the mighty salvific work of God. It is a true honor. Please continue to pray for him as we all pray for you during this time of transition. Now I had planned an elaborate sermon for you all today, drawing on the connection between the preaching of Jonah result, resulting in the mass salvation of a pagan city and the work of Philadelphia Lutheran Ministries in our nation's fifth largest city. But then the reality of Thursday's vote set in for the Dinglish district to call your pastor as our next bishop, and I decided to change course. Jonah fought against the word and will of God. He ended up swallowed by a whale. The word of God must go forth. The word of God is powerful and active. It must not be neglected. But it takes a massive effort and an entire church body striving together in love for this mighty word of the Lord to go forth in our day. Did you know that so Jonah, when he finally gets around to preaching his sermon to the Ninevites, is one of the shortest ever? Chapter 3. Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. If only, right? <laughs> Pastors, if we could preach five words in the Hebrew and have an entire city repent. But it also took the news of the preacher being spit up on the shores to break up the rocky hearts of the unbelievers to convert them. We haven't been given such dramatic signs in our day. But what we've been given in the gifts of Christ are perfectly sufficient for all that we face, the demons tremble at the name of Jesus. The forces of darkness flee at the waters of holy baptism. And the army of Satan is conquered in the body of Christ broken for you and his blood shed for you. Dear flock of the great and true shepherd, you have nothing to fear. Though winds may blow fierce, and lightning crash all around you and the ship of your life appear to be sinking, shout aloud to your Lord and call upon his name. He is easily roused to your care and protection. Recall these wonderful words that you were taught in the catechism. Our Father who art in heaven, with these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father, and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him, as dear children ask their dear father. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? When the disciples ask this question, they actually do so assuming a positive, an affirmative response. Do you not care that we are perishing? Yes, Lord, we know that you do. Now please do something. Yet they still receive this cutting rebuke from the Lord. Why are you so afraid? 
have you still no faith? Perhaps when you heard me read those words just moments ago in the gospel reading, those words struck you to the heart. Dear saints of God, be not afraid. Just as Christ was not sent to die in a tragic boat accident, your heavenly Father will not abandon you or your congregation, your family, in time of transition. No matter what comes to you in this life, your gracious Lord hears your prayers. He delights in calling, he delights in you calling upon him in faith, trusting his promises, holding him to his word. Even in your worries and struggles with unbelief, cast all your cares upon him. Now I wish I could stand here and tell you if you just pray the right way, your Father in heaven will do exactly what you tell him. Stop the storm. Restore the calm and comfort. But you know that isn't always true. Your God is not so easily manipulated. Your Father knows best. And what he has for you is the very best. He is not holding anything back from you. Nor does he delight in your suffering. But you fall in line that your heavenly father can bring about great good in what appears to be a distressing situation. You do not know how long the storms in your life, in your congregation, your families will rage. But know this, Jesus hasn't brought you this far to abandon you to the deep now. No, in the cross, Jesus suffered the worst that Sheol, the deeps of the ocean, and hell had to offer. Recall that Jesus prophesied, for just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus was born of a virgin for you. Jesus is both God and man for you. Jesus lived the perfect life according to the law for you. Jesus was baptized for you. Jesus was willingly betrayed, tortured, and crucified for you. Jesus from the cross prayed, forgive them for you. Jesus rested on the Sabbath in the tomb for you. Jesus burst the gates of hell for you. Jesus brought you from the kingdom of darkness and the devil to his glorious light through the waters of holy baptism by his mighty word. Jesus continues to remember you forgive you, and strengthen you through divine communion. You taste and see that the Lord is good by means of his body given for you and his blood shed for you. Jesus is true God and true man, come not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for your sin. This is the essence of the church. You who were dead in your trespasses and your sins are made alive in Christ. There is nothing the devil, his demons, or the world can do against Christ and his kingdom, the church. The devil thought he had won when Jesus hung on the cross. Yet there on the cross, the king was on his throne. You will not know the love of God any better in heaven than seeing Christ on the cross making the ultimate sacrifice for your sin. There at the cross, justice and mercy of God collide, and you are saved. It is there at the cross that forgiveness is accomplished. You can forgive because you are forgiven. Every sin has already been paid for. The church eats, sleeps, and breathes this forgiveness of sins. So 
so you see, fear not. Your sins will not condemn you. You belong to Christ. The devil and the gates of hell are defeated. They are sad and powerless, for you are in Christ. Recall that Jesus said, No sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The men of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah. <laughs>